Two years ago, I bought a house in Palm Springs and renovated it, and last January, I put it on Airbnb. When the house was finally ready, I was so excited to see how it would do on Airbnb. And it was a little slow at first, but come spring, things were really heating up and we were making a lot of money. Finally, all the work seemed worth it. And it was kind of like magic, how it was truly passive income. Once summer hit though, it was looking very different. And I've shared our best month, but I haven't shared the full story yet. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, you guys. It, we lost money. We, uh, it's not looking good. But I will go into detail into why and really the things I've learned and what you should know if you're ever thinking of doing an Airbnb. Also, if you wanna know even more Airbnb insider info, I actually have a newsletter that sends you what you need to know when it comes to everything Airbnb. I'll have the link below to that if you wanna subscribe. Okay, so let's take a look at what the summer was like. Let's start with how much much we actually made. Going into the summer, the bank account balance for the house was $25,000. So I'm just gonna be talking about what we made over the summer. If you wanna know what we made in the spring, which is really the high season of Airbnb in Palm Springs, you can go watch this video. I'll put it in the description. That is where you're gonna see like the good months where you make a lot and exactly how much it all breaks down to. So go check that out. So we we're doing really well in the spring and then summer hits. I'll get into it, but first I wanna thank ClickUp for sponsoring today's video. If you're not familiar with ClickUp, it's a productivity platform platform that'll save you one day a week on work. ClickUp began with the premise that productivity was broken. There were too many tools to keep track of, too many things in entirely separate ecosystems. They figured there had to be a more productive way to get through the daily hustle. So ClickUp is one tool to house all your projects, goals, spreadsheets, documents, and more. And it's built for teams of one to 1,000 plus. It's packed with features and customization tools that no other productivity tool has, so you can work the way that you work best. Whether you're in project management, you're a YouTube or you own Airbnbs, ClickUp has easy to use project management solutions to make a more efficient work environment. So join the more than 800,000 highly productive teams using ClickUp today. You can use my code Shelby Church to get 15% off ClickUp's massive unlimited plan for an entire year. That means you can start reclaiming your time for as little as $5 a month. I'll have the link and code also down below. So thank you to ClickUp for sponsoring. And now let's get into the profit and loss. Okay, so I've got it up. I actually have this all in ClickUp, shout out. So they integrate with Google Sheets. So it's like a Google Sheet in ClickUp. Let's start with June. So June, we had two bookings and the nightly rate was not that high. I think it was like four or $500 a night. The total amount paid was $5,450. After all the fees, the property management fee and everything, we got $4,106 for June. So honestly, that's kind of a break even month. It's not too bad for the summer. That's kind of what I was expecting. Okay, July. We had one renter, one. I changed the names of these renters, by the way, to protect their privacy, but these are fake names. Karen, Patty, Molly, all that, totally fake names. So we had one renter, only three nights were booked out. So they paid $1,500, we got $1,106. Obviously this is not enough to cover any of the expenses. Like it's not even enough to cover the utilities probably. And I will say we probably could have lowered our nightly rate more. However, our electricity bill gets so high in the summer that it would al you would almost maybe lose money by hosting people if you make your nightly rate too low. August, we had one renter. They rented for three nights. They paid $1,221. We had some expenses that we had to pay for. Just, we had a few things we had to pay someone to come fix within the house. That was $400. So we only got $562 for this month. Okay, we had one guest for September, three nights, they paid 1,500, we got $1,184. So our total revenue before any of the expenses over the summer was $6,970. <sighs> Not nearly, like, we literally made like like almost triple that in one month in the spring, so it's crazy. I knew the summer would be slow, 
I didn't know it would be that slow. So now let's get into the expenses because this is where it gets bad. <laughs> So here's a look at the overall expenses. For the most part, it's about the same every month. It really only fluctuates on the utilities, mainly on the electricity, because the electricity bill can get very high in the summer and the gas bill can get really high in the winter. But luckily our gas bill is pretty low right now. So we can see the mortgage is the same every month. It's $3,000 and that includes the property taxes, homeowners insurance, principal and interest. SCE is our electricity bill. And as you can see, it was really high in June and July. And what I realized is the thermostat was being left on all the time set at 86 degrees. So basically the AC was running for no reason, even when people weren't there. That was kind of my property manager's call. When I realized our AC bill was so high, I asked her to turn it off completely when people are gone. And as we can see, it's gone down to $500. I don't even wanna know what the electricity bill would be if the house was fully booked. Like it would probably be like 2,500. The water bill usually hovers at the same 70 to $100. Gas is pretty inexpensive in the summer at like $10. The pool cleaning is $170 per month. And that $220 one, we had to get new filters. That's why it was a little bit more. And then we also added on pest control in July because we noticed like these very, very small ants. So just to be safe, we now have a pest control company come. I am also just now remembering we also pay for Simply Safe and maybe a few other random subscriptions. So that's probably an extra $100. All right, so for June, the total expenses were 4,300. July was about the same. August and September were even lower at about 3,900, thanks to saving a little on that electricity bill. But you can see on each month, we didn't even break even. We were really at a loss of like, about $3,000 for each of these months. When we calculate in the revenue, we really were down $9,479. But our beginning bank balance was $25,000. So we still had $16,000 in the bank, even after being at a loss for all these months because the high season really is like very profitable. So the ending total at $16,000, it is worse than I expected. I will admit, um, but it's still not that bad. But we did end up having a couple more expenses that I did wanna factor in here because if you're thinking of doing a short-term rental, these are gonna come into play. And that is maintenance and additional property taxes. So our house, because we renovated it, we didn't really have that much maintenance, but there was one thing and that was replacing the AC unit. It was 30 years old. We should have just done it while we were doing everything else, but we didn't. And come this summer, it wasn't working so well. So we had to pay to get a new one. As you can see, the cost for the unit and to get it installed was $12,967. And then it was another 1,200 to repatch the roof area where they put it in. So in total, that's a pretty major expense considering we only had 16,000 left in this account. Wasn't expecting it, but also kind of was expecting that. Like I knew we would have to do that at some point. At least we could use some of our earnings to do this rather than dipping into our own money like we were during the whole renovation. And then another expected but unexpected expense that I just totally forgot about was additional property taxes. So I'm sure you guys know home prices went up significantly in the last couple years. And with that, so did everyone's property taxes. Maybe in some cases people have it locked in, but not in our case. So we actually got a bill recently that we need to pay an extra $4,647. Like that is a lot. <laughs> That's a really significant amount that has been added. So not only do we have to kind of like back pay, I believe this 4,000 amount, but also moving forward, our mortgage isn't $3,059 anymore. Now every month we have to pay about $3,400. I know I say mortgage here, but that includes property taxes in that lump amount. So that's something that I just didn't really think about, but is good to know that, you know, property taxes will go up. So that was another $18,850 in expenses. These added expenses were even more than like just our actual cost of running it, like our mortgage and utilities and everything. So the ending balance was 
negative $2,821. So obviously I had to dip into another one of my accounts to cover the costs. I really didn't expect that we were gonna have to do that. Things felt like they were going so well in the spring, but this is the risk that you take with Airbnb, you know? On the plus side, we've at least been able to pay the mortgage and also pay for a new AC unit with our earnings. About $10,000 per year of the mortgage goes towards the principal payment. So that's $10,000 in equity we have added in the house. And I've learned a few things we can change in order to do better next summer. The first thing being, I really want to get solar panels. The electricity bill is really our second biggest expense. And with solar panels, you can get that down to pretty much nothing. Of course, it's a hefty initial investment. I believe it's between twenty dollars to $30,000, but there's a really great tax credit available right now. And our electricity bill is just so high every month that it would really be worth it for us. So while it normally is a low season in Palm Springs in the summer, from what I've gathered, this year was an especially like record low in terms of short-term rentals. From what I heard, pretty much everyone probably had a similar experience to mine. I'm really glad I didn't spend any of the money that we made in the springtime because it really saved me in the summer and covering like almost all the costs. Okay, I wanted to pop back in here while I'm editing this to talk about why I think this low season was so low. One, we are in more of a recession or at least there are fears of more of a recession. Interest rates are higher. People are obviously not spending as much money on travel. And I wouldn't be shocked if that continues. So I do think that plays a part in this. Two, Airline prices are still pretty high. For me to fly to Palm Springs right now, if I wanted to go last minute, would be $800 from Seattle. I think airline prices might have something to do with it because a lot of our bookings were people flying in from New York and Chicago, cold places. And three, I might've mentioned this, but it is just so hot in Palm Springs in the summer that people really don't wanna go. I thought they'd go a little more than like one or two bookings though. I think we just needed to lower our price more because even if we got our energy costs lower, we still have a certain amount that we need to make in bookings to cover all of these costs. So all in all, it was a slow summer and it's still been a pretty slow fall for myself and for other Palm Springs vacation rentals. I do think it'll pick up in the winter and the spring, but I don't know if it will be as good as last year because it just seems like people aren't spending as much money on travel and that's totally fair. So even though it was a rough summer season, I still don't regret doing an Airbnb in Palm Springs because personally, I love going to it. And it was really fun, the whole process of turning it into an Airbnb and everything. For me, it's really not just about making money, but it's actually a place myself, family, and friends all go to and enjoy. So honestly, even if it just breaks even, that's kind of fine with me because I still love this house. I actually love being an Airbnb host. And I think this is just a temporary low season. You know, at the end of five years, I'm sure things will even out. So I hope you guys appreciate the transparency. Give this video a thumbs up, please, if you do, because this one was not a fun one to make. <laughs> like, if really calculating all this, I was like, oh God. I think though, it's important to share this because if you're thinking of doing Airbnb, it's good to know about these risks. It can be dangerous to assume you're always gonna be making a ton of money on Airbnb because these kind of things can happen. And that is why I always have like, a large chunk of savings to cover these costs. So I wasn't too worried when this happened and that's something I would definitely recommend for people with Airbnb. Let's hope my next update is a little more inspiring. <laughs> that is gonna be it for today. If you wanna see the springtime where we actually made money, I'll link that down below. That gives you more of a full picture of what Airbnb in Palm Springs can be like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter. I'll have that link down below where you can subscribe. That's gonna be it for this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.